All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to prove an important property of sequences, which will be very useful later for our limit laws. And let me motivate this as follows. Consider the following sequence. Consider Sn to be one over n. And notice for every n, this is positive. However, let's figure out what the infimum of Sn is. So in this case, notice, even though each of the terms is positive, the infimum of the sequence Sn is zero. So notice the infimum of, if you want, absolute value of Sn, where n is in n, is actually zero. So even though the sequence can be positive, the minimum value could still be zero. And in particular here, notice the distance between the x-axis and your sequence slowly becomes zero. And what I wanna show is this is not the case if the sequence converges to something non-zero. And in particular, here's what I wanna show. So claim, proof, uh, theorem du jour, okay? Suppose, again, Sn is non-zero for all n, and Sn converges to something non-zero, then, there is some positive constant m so some universal positive constant m such that for all n absolute value of sn it's greater or equal to little m so let me explain what is happening so suppose, again, just to simplify, you have a sequence of positive values that converge to something positive. So suppose your sequence converges to S that is positive, then in particular what this is saying is this whole sequence is always a positive distance away from the x-axis. In other words, it's at least m away from the x-axis, where m is uh, greater or equal to zero, strictly greater than zero. Then, um, in particular, you should think of this as sort of almost like a repulsive gravi gravitational force. The whole sequence is always at least m away from the x-axis. And this is sometimes called bounded away from zero. And which is, again, by the way, not true for the sequence 1 over n. In that case, the sequence was really a distance 0 away from the x-axis. All right. And in particular, what this is also saying is that the infimum of the sequence is at least m away. So it's positive. Very good. And how do you show this? Well, it's a very nice proof, actually. So proof, first of all, without loss of generality, assume that the limit is positive. So without loss of generality, assume S is positive. Why can we do that? Well, since S is non-zero, it's either positive or negative. And if S is negative, just repeat the proof with minus Sn. With minus Sn instead of Sn. Why? Well, if Sn is non-zero, minus Sn is non-zero, and moreover, the limit of minus Sn becomes minus S, which becomes positive. So, and last but not least, absolute value of minus Sn is just absolute value of Sn. So it really gives you the same result. Okay, then we 
want to use the fact that Sn converges to um, S. So let epsilon positive B2 be announced. Then there is some capital M. And so capital N in general, it's not an integer, but without loss of generality, uh, assume it's an integer because let's say n is 3.14 just choose the next integer which is 4 if n is uh, 42.5 choose n be 43 so without loss of generality n is an integer so such that if n is bigger than capital n then Sn minus S is less than epsilon. And in particular, let's dissect this. Let's analyze this because it's called analysis. But Sn minus capital S less than epsilon, what this implies, it means Sn minus S It's uh, between epsilon and minus epsilon. And in particular, let's look at this side. So what this also implies, so Sn is between S plus epsilon and S minus epsilon. And what I'm saying is let's focus on this inequality. In particular Sn, Sn is bigger than S minus epsilon. Now, remember the limit is positive, and in theory, epsilon is small. So this thing is actually also positive if you choose epsilon small enough, which we'll do now. So now let, uh, so choose epsilon such that S minus epsilon is positive. So in other words, epsilon is less than S, but also positive. So epsilon is less than S. And for instance, epsilon equals S over 2 works. So this motivates the the selection in the book. The book says absolute value of s over 2. So here s equals 2. S, epsilon is s over 2, but really any value that makes this positive. Then what is going on? Let's see. What do we have? We have that after this threshold m, our sequence is actually bounded away from zero because we know that our sequence is bigger than S minus epsilon. So this is Sn. So in particular, it has a floor and, you know, because this is positive, we actually know that in this region, the sequence is bounded away from zero. So in this case, the problem is solved. What about for n before capital N? Well, it doesn't really matter because there are just finitely many values. In particular, what you would like to choose, namely, because there are just a couple of values, choose the minimum of those values. So choose the minimum of absolute value of S1, up to absolute value of Sn. Because by definition, we know that the sequence is bigger than that minimum here. And we also know that the sequence is at least S minus epsilon away here. So if you choose the minimum of everything, then we do get that everywhere, the sequence is a positive distance away from the x-axis. And this is, if you want, the crux of our proof. So, this is in fact our little m. So let 
little m be the minimum of everything. So s1 dot 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 sn and this number s minus epsilon. Which again, we know it's positive because by construction this is positive and all the sequences, right, is non-zero. So each of those absolute values is positive. And all that I'm claiming is that Sn is greater or equal to little m for all n. And this you just do by cases. So case one, if n is large enough, so greater than capital N, then we've shown that Sn is, uh, I think, greater than or equal, maybe even uh, strictly greater than, actually, uh, S minus epsilon. But in particular, uh, S minus epsilon is just one value here, so the smallest one of all those is uh, less than this, less than or equal to this. So in particular, S minus epsilon is bigger than the minimum of all those values. So here we are done, and in case two, so if N is less than or equal to capital N, then, well, Sn is one of those values, so in particular it's bigger than the smallest one of those values. So Sn is greater than the minimum of S1 up to Sn, and this thing, it's bigger than all those values. So the minimum of all those values, so this is also by definition greater or equal to little m, and so in both cases we are done, and therefore S is in, Sn is really bounded above, uh, uh, bounded away from zero, if you like. All right, thank you very much.